everybody. And um, um, Dr. Ann Burnley, I'm a preventive medicine physician and public health consultant at um, Fort Meade. I work in an army clinic. And um, I'm going to talk about the human papilloma virus diseases, it's HPV associated diseases, and uh, the HPV vaccine. Um, disclaimer, I'm certainly not a cancer specialist, but vaccines are what um, I do. And so it's exciting, you know, in this fight against cancer to know that we have a highly efficacious vaccine um, to combat um, cancer. So um, HPV, human papilloma virus, um, it's a DNA virus, cause, uh, most common sexually transmitted infection in the United States. There are many different types. It's important to know that um, it can be transmitted through um, intimate skin-to-skin -skin contact. So there doesn't have to be actual sexual intercourse. It can be spread um, from hands, fingers. And um, somebody with HPV does not have to have symptoms to transmit the disease. Fortunately, 90% of HPV will resolve spontaneously without additional care. However, when it does not resolve um, and it persists, it can lead to um, uh, uh, conditions like uh, genital warts and um, cancers. So approximately 79 million people are infected. Basically, 50% of the new infections occur um, in people, in young people, 15 to 24. And um, a lot of money is spent on the uh, managing HPV uh, complications. Basically, basically, this is a worldwide burden of cervical disease. And I just want to say, every minute a woman is diagnosed with cervical cancer, every two minutes a woman dies of cervical cancer. And this is, uh, you know, basically the orange. Um, those, they have the highest rates, 56.3 uh, per 100,000 women. Incidents are rates of uh, ca uh, cervical cancer. That's in, uh, on the African continent. And you can see it is an issue. So their HPV has types. They are high-risk types and low-risk types. Um, HPV 16 and 18 are the high-risk types. 16 especially is the most oncogenic most um, likely to cause cancer. So a lot of cancers, cervical cancers, anal cancers um, caused by HPV. Also for the low risk types causes gen uh, genital warts and also a condition called uh, recurrent respiratory papillomatosis. Basically you have warts growing in the respiratory system and you can see these uh, in children who were born of mothers who had uh, HPV. Sometimes um, HPV gets into the respiratory system, and it can be quite a challenge to manage because it recurs. Um, so the top slide is uh, uh, com uh, common warts. Different types cause that, and then you can have it in the throat, and then that's a cervix. So HPV causes six types of cancers. As you can see, 35% um, um, is, uh, is in the cervix and 65% the rest in uh, other parts of the body. We already talked about mouth and throat, um, causes anal, vulva, vaginal, and penile cancer. So um, cervical cancer is the most common HPV-associated cancer um, in women, and um, oropharyngeal cancer, so of the uh, throat and um, back of the tongue in men. Um, the screening recommendations by the USPSTF, typically uh, young women don't start getting screened um, until they're 21. And between 21 and 65, um, the recommendation, the most recent recommendations was screen women every three years with a PAP. And 30 to 65, you could actually go to a five, uh, five year if you do both PAP and HPV. However, these are just general guidelines. Your provider is the one who knows what your risks are, and that is a decision that should be made between that particular patient 
and their healthcare provider. So these are just healthcare guidelines, recommendations. The final word should be a decision that's made uh, by your treating provider who knows your risks. So this is just to show that um, the HPV just doesn't happen on day one. It's a process over time where there are changes in the cells in the cervix. So that's why um, pap smears are important because uh, a sample of cervical cells are taken um, and um, examined under the microscope and they are different. Um, your pap could come back normal, there could be what they call um, low-grade squamous intraepithelial lesion, lysol, or you know, a high grade and the treatment is different. So that's why PAPs are important. Um, oh, okay. So every year in the US, 27,000 people get cancer caused by HPV. That's one person every 20 minutes of every day, all year long. So the good news is there are vaccines to prevent HPV infection. And currently we have three vaccines. You have, we have um, the one that came out initially was the Gardasil. Um, so that is effective against um, infection with uh, type 16, 18. Remember those were the two high risk types. Um, uh, those are two high risk types and six and 11. And then um, Severix. So a Gardasil can be used in both boys and uh, men and women. Initially, uh, Gardasil started out in women while they were finishing the clinical trials in boys. And um, then there's the Severix, which is for women only, um, effective against 16 and 18. And then we currently have a, what they call a nine-valent um, uh, Gardasil, Gardasil 9, that is effective against the nine types of HPV here. The recommended um, age... Um, is starting at 11 to 12 years old. So for most parents with 11 year olds, you know that's when they also get um, the Tdap, the adult Tdap, big T, small d, small a, small p, and they also get meningitis. So HPV should be one of those vaccines that um, children of that age group are getting. Current uh, guidelines, you, um, the age is from, you, you can start as young as nine up to age 26. One of the questions I get all the time, even from the immunization clinic where I work is, oh, I have uh, this young lady, she started HPV vaccine, um, she got one dose, it's usually three doses, she's now 27, what do I do? You complete the series. Once the series is started before age um, 26, you can complete it at any time. The reason why some people think, oh, maybe too young to um, start, but you want to get them before they become infected because the vaccine is efficacious to prevent infection. So you want to catch them early. There are concerns about, um, you, know, you know, if you give HPV vaccines, kids will run out and have sex, and it just blows my mind because... Um, you could have, think of this, you could have your daughter. She's a virgin, okay? She does the right thing and she gets married. And on her wedding night, she gets infected with HPV. Okay? So, you know, think about it that way. So, HPV vaccine can prevent an estimated 28,500 new cancers every year. And, you know, studies... At, HPV vaccine came out in, in mid-2006, uh, and since then, you know, there has, um, infections have been reduced by 90% in countries that have, have really high immunization rates, like um, Australia. People from Cameroon remember, we used to get immunized in school. The, the immunization people will come, people are jumping out the windows, and, you know, but basically they have a really high rate of immunization, and they've decreased their H, um, um, HPV infections by 90%. Genital warts have, and cervical abnormalities also have reduced, um, and reduction in pap abnormalities, um, genital warts detected uh, within four years of vaccine introduction. Um, the infection rates here in the U.S. in a study published in Pediatric in 2016 shows that the um, prevalence, basically meaning if you look at the population at any one point in time, 
the infection rate decreased from 11.5% to 4.3%. That's a 64% reduction. So among women, 20 to 24, 34% reduction. Pre-vaccine era compared to post-vaccine era, 2009 to 2012. Nationwide, 6 out of 10 girls have started the HPV vaccine. Doesn't mean they finished it. And 5 out of 10 boys. So... This is the final slide. This is just to basically um, based on how efficacious the vaccine is. So you have 26 million girls aged 12 years old. Let's say none of them have, uh, gets the HPV vaccine. It's estimated that 168,000 of them would get uh, cervical cancer, of which 54,000 would die from cervical cancer. So zero cases prevented by vaccination zero deaths prevented by vaccination. If they have, if 30% of those same girls are vaccinated, so then you'll have, um, it, it, you can see the, the drop in the cervical cancer cases and the drop in deaths. And if it's 80%, that's even more of those girls get um, vaccinated. So for me, the question is, I have a, I have a, a, a son who just turned 11 next, um, last week. So he's due for his Tdap, meningitis, and HPV. My son will not be the one who infects your daughter with HPV. And I don't want your daughter to be the one who infects my son. Well, he's not, she's not going to infect my son because my son is going to be vaccinated. So my push is we have a cancer vaccine, okay, one that is very efficacious. We need to take advantage of what we have here because... There are women dying all over the world from cervical cancer, and we are not taking advantage of a cancer vaccine here in the United States. Thank you.